Despite what they say, the immune response is real. You lost hair because of an immune response. The secret is what caused the immune response. When you figure that out, you will begin to grow hair back. I am AQBS and this is Back to the Barber. Imagine you had a garden on the left side of your house, on the right side of your house, and on the back of your house. You use the same seeds, the same water from the water hose, the same type of fertilizer. Treated it the same exact way, using the same garden tools. Gave it the same amount of love and care. Obviously on the same plot of land. And you find that over time, and by the way, the weather is the same. It gets equal sunlight, rain. But over time you find that the back house garden stops producing anything the, the fruit or vegetables got smaller and smaller over time to the point where nothing grows you were even smart enough to say well let me see if I could take some buds from the plants on the side and plant them plant them in the back and you find that it grew for a minute but not as large and over time even that stopped working That's the enigma of male pattern balding or androgenetic alopecia. We find that the sides, the top, the back of the head, or scalp, or total scalp has been treated the same exact way. No differences. Yet, we find that the hair falls out the top and even somewhat on the sides. Over time, and we have this DHT steroid being attracted to our scalp. And we know that this DHT is only attracted or accumulating in the scalp because the scalp is inflamed. It seems to be acting as if there is an infection. So while we act as if or society in general acts as if male pattern balding is some sort of final form. You're just supposed to look like that at whatever age it happens. You will find that generally speaking, it still acts as if it is a skin infection. There's a lot of points that I repeat over and over in these videos because although it is very apparent what's going on, cognitive dissonance in just the balding sphere doesn't allow us to see what's obvious. All of our hair fixes are meant to deal with inflammation, deal with acne, deal with redness, and deal with soreness. Matter of fact, some people even use Monistat 7, a yeast treatment to assist with balding. And that's pretty ironic, right? Something that's from a DHT androgen. However, you can use something such as Monistat 7 or a shampoo that is meant for an infection should help. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So this garden analogy that I'm getting to is pointing to the fact that although from an anatomy perspective, top, sides, back, all were made in the same fashion in the womb. 
somehow, some way, we began losing hair at the top. Now, this analogy points to the fact that if everything is the same, you bought everything the same, treated it the same, but the back of this garden in the back of the house is not producing hair, or I'm sorry, in this case, it'd be fruit or vegetables, then that tells you that it's something in that particular space, more than likely in that dirt, that is causing the problem. And if you took a soil sample, you might find that it is a mildew from the compost, or there's some sort of sludge that's there that was left probably before the house was built and it's seeping into maybe there's something from the toilet or something that's seeping into that area and now that garden from a anatomy perspective the the soil that was there the the fertilizer everything is the same but in that particular space there's accumulation of some sort of toxin rather it's mold rather it's something from you know plumbing and it is causing problems with the actual growth of the vegetables in the garden and this is the case with the scalp the scalp is balding because of a true immune response there is no other way or reasoning you touch poison ivy there's immune response when you get bit by a spider there's immune response when you get a rash from somewhere you get immune response some people can do dairy immune response we see that the body actually responds to this thing in real time on the schedule, rather it's immediate or a couple of days or a couple of hours, it responds. So my point is, if balding is an immune response, what is truly, realistically, authentically causing the hair loss or the immune response? It will be something that's accumulating in the scalp. And DHT is not going to cause an immune response. DHT is the immune response. The scalp is toxic. How did the, the scalp go from being normalized to toxic? It's because I truly believe that whatever was in the body through the gut system, more than likely is some sort of pathogen, at best a protein that you don't supposed to be consuming, such as gluten, made its way to the scalp and the body says you do not belong there this whole process go th goes through dht is there once dht is there the hair stops growing obviously um and also the longer it stays there and the less hair you have the more mechanical changes that will occur and these mechanical changes make it almost impossible to regrow hair because now what used to be soft tissue is now hard tissue. What used to be loose and supple and an omega scalp is now an alpha hardened desert that cannot regrow hair as like I am doing now because I have attempted to go backwards and fix the mechanical physical changes that occur to stop what's occur making it occur that way, which is DHT, right? And also, why is DHT there? Because of an immune response. You stop because of the immune response, you go backwards. So this toxic scalp or scalp toxici toxicity is the key to a boy or a man never having to lose his hair. And it starts with the gut system, just as all other hair losses have always done. The difference between what you refer to as androgenetic alopecia and male pattern balding is it's just very slow. It's a slow process, but it's the same exact thing. So look into the toxic scalp. And what happens is this. Those pathogens that escape from the gut, leaky gut syndrome, kind of, right? The gut line, and remember, hair that you lose on your head is the hair that you've lost in your body. The hair that you've lost in the stomach causes the hair that you've lost on the scalp. It's the same as that. If you think you just have hair on your scalp or your arms or the outside of your body, 
you should look into how much hair is really within the body. Hair is used as a transition system to uh, transfer items along, cellular items along, food, processing. Hair is all throughout your body. You can look that up. Now, they'll give it different names, but basically it's the same function as hair. Okay. If you understand you lost hair in the inside before you lost hair on the outside, you will understand how you can reverse it. Okay. So these toxic wastes from these pathogens that are only in your blood system now and somehow conquered the scalp and replaced the good bacteria because we talk about this in the gut how the good bacteria allows us to break down foods and the bad bacteria acts for sugars and sweets and it can cause problems with us it's the same exactly it's the same exact problem in the scalp the decent bacteria that has always been there that belongs there that has this whole infrastructure that's always been there is replaced by pathogens and and Bacteria and things that do not belong up there. And when it does, it throws the whole system off. Just like in the wild, just like in any other place, when there's something that's that's introduced into the environment that doesn't belong there, it throws the balance off. And that is what we call hair loss. Now, to end this toxic scalp video, understand that one of the ways of getting these toxins out is to knead them out. This is why the derma roller and the derma stamp and cupping and microcurrent and even brushing is very important. These toxins will eventually leave the scalp, but you do have to start with the gut with your diet. And again, people can have a horrible, absolute horrible diet and have beautiful hair, but you can't. That's facts, okay? So with that stated, start with the gut, microbiotics, probiotics, prebiotics, things of this nature, and your diet, try to figure out what causes the immune response. And understand if you view that you have a pathogen that's caused the, the immune response, what you would do instead of trying to use oils to grow hair or formulas to eradicate DHT, what you're going to really be looking into is trying to figure out how you can get the scalp as sanitized as possible. When you sanitize it, there's no reason for DHT. And if there's no reason for DHT, when you do start inhibiting it, now you can deal with the mechanical physical changes of the fibrosis the DHT cause. And when you do those things, the hair will grow back naturally. So that's my video for today. Hopefully something here has helped you to halt hair loss and to restore it. If so, hit the like or subscribe. If not, give another video a chance. I'm pretty sure you'll find something interesting. But if I can do it, you all can do it too. Let's get you back to the barber.